Astronomers just spotted an object moving through our solar system, and at first NASA called it just another comet. Routine, forgettable. But something was off. Not ordinary, not natural. One scientist dared to say it. This could be an alien spacecraft. Decades ago, Stephen Hawking warned us cosmic signals could hide deadly surprises. And now, the universe was testing us. History wasn't just happening. The object's speed shocked everyone. It was moving at approximately 87 kilometers per second, over 10 times faster than most comets and far beyond the limits of objects bound by the sun's gravity alone. To put it in perspective, it could cross the entire United States in just two minutes. Scientists began suspecting some form of propulsion. Its behavior also reminded researchers of Oumuamua, which accelerated in ways natural physics couldn't explain. If this object collided with Earth, the energy released could reach 10,000 megatons of TNT, over 600 times more powerful than the largest nuclear bomb ever detonated, enough to devastate entire continents. Trajectory data added another layer of mystery. Its orbital plane aligned almost perfectly with the planets, Venus, Mars and Jupiter, all within 0.1 to 0.3 astronomical units, AU, during close flybys. Gravity assists might explain small deviations, but the probability of this exact path occurring naturally is roughly 1 in 100 million, according to calculations by scientists. Observers noted the object's flybys weren't random. Each pass near a planet subtly altered its trajectory, as if it were navigating with intent. Energy calculations showed acceleration spikes of 0.1 to 0.3 meters per second squared, far higher than typical comets of similar size. Its comet-like exterior could mask a dense, possibly metallic core, shielded by kilometers of ice and dust, making it almost invisible to standard optical and radar scans. And while you're tracking this cosmic mystery with us, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay on top of every new discovery as scientists unravel three IATLAS's secrets. Comparisons with Oumuamua highlighted the similarities. Both exhibited velocities exceeding 80 kilometers per second, unusual acceleration patterns, and unpredictable paths that defied conventional celestial mechanics. Public interest skyrocketed as the unusual combination of speed, trajectory, and orbital alignment became known. Each new piece of data, from precise flyby timings to alignment with planetary orbits, hinted at intelligence or deliberate design, though nothing could be confirmed. Its path through the solar system defied casual explanation. Gravity assists could tweak a course slightly, but this sequence was highly precise, with scientists estimating the odds of it occurring naturally at 1 in 100 million. Every acceleration measurement, every flyby, and every orbital alignment added weight to the suspicion. It didn't follow the rules we expected from natural objects. This wasn't just scientific curiosity. Could an object accelerate beyond known physics and navigate past planets deliberately? Could it be a probe, alien spacecraft, or something entirely unknown? Data didn't provide answers, but it forced urgent questions. Speed, alignment, flybys, acceleration, everything stacked up in a way that demanded attention. Scientists emphasized the numbers weren't just strange, they were suspicious. Every twist in its journey, every unexpected flyby, and every calculation of velocity seemed to point toward one uncomfortable possibility. This might be something designed, aware, and far beyond anything humanity has ever encountered. And the mystery became even more tangible when observers examined its appearance. At first glance, it looked like any ordinary comet, complete with a glowing tail stretching over 100,000 kilometers and an icy exterior hundreds of meters thick. But appearances can be deceiving. Comets, it turns out, are perfect camouflage for something far more advanced. A dense core, potentially hundreds of meters wide, could be entirely hidden beneath layers of ice and dust. NASA's own studies confirm that ice over one kilometer thick can shield objects from most optical and radar scans. Essentially, the universe had handed this visitor a Trojan horse disguise, 
hiding whatever it carried inside while presenting the illusion of a harmless comet. No telescope, no matter how powerful, could pierce that veil. Then there was the timing, almost unnervingly convenient. As three IATLAS approached perihelion, about 0.25 astronomical units from the Sun, it disappeared from Earth's view. Optical and radar instruments lost contact, blocked by solar glare. This is not uncommon. Spacecraft and even Mars missions have gone missing temporarily during solar conjunctions, sometimes for up to two weeks. But for this interstellar visitor, the blackout created a perfect window for something subtle, maybe even intentional. Trajectory shifts during this period could go undetected, and astronomers knew it. Every observer held their breath, aware that whatever happened behind the sun would remain invisible during a critical few weeks. And while scientists debated detection and trajectories, humanity was making its own noise. Hawking's warning echoed louder than ever. We shouldn't be broadcasting into space. For over a century, radio signals, television transmissions, and deliberate messages like Voyager's Golden Records or the 1974 Arashibo message had been streaming into the cosmos at the speed of light 300,000 kilometers per second, announcing our presence. The dark forest theory, an idea that advanced civilizations may treat unknown civilizations as threats, made the stakes terrifyingly clear. Humanity may have already exposed itself to danger, and this object could be the first signal that someone or something noticed. Even as astronomers adjusted instruments and recalculated orbits, the sense of unease grew. This wasn't just about a fast-moving, improbable object anymore. It was about timing, camouflage, and human vulnerability. Every perihelion disappearance, every masked core, every radio wave humanity had ever sent was a reminder that the universe might not just be watching, it could be listening. And the more scientists studied 3 IATLAS, the more it seemed that every invisible maneuver was custom-tailored to exploit exactly these weaknesses. The blending of natural phenomena with technological possibilities made this encounter feel like a high-stakes puzzle. On one hand, the comet-like exterior gave a sense of safety, something familiar. On the other, the blackout window behind the sun meant even the most sophisticated instruments couldn't confirm what changes might have occurred. And all the while, humanity's own signals streaked across space, announcing our presence with no way of knowing who or what was receiving them. By now three IATLAS had shifted from a mysterious visitor to a mirror reflecting our own oversights. Scientists were tracking speed, trajectory and acceleration, but perhaps the most important factor was humanity's own loud footprint in the cosmos. Every deliberate signal, every radio broadcast traveling billions of kilometers might have already drawn attention. Hawking's fears of drawing dangerous eyes were no longer theoretical. They were intertwined with this fast-moving, perfectly disguised visitor that had already evaded our most powerful instruments. Its presence posed questions impossible to ignore. Was it just a probe silently observing? Did its blackout behind the sun allow a course correction, positioning it strategically within the solar system? And how many of our signals had already alerted it to our existence? The lines between observation and vulnerability blurred. Scientists were now not only chasing data, they were chasing the uncomfortable possibility that humanity might have already announced itself to something far more capable than we were prepared to face. Even ordinary comet behavior, dust tails, icy shells, perihelion brightening, was now suspicious. Each layer of ice, potentially over 500 meters thick, could conceal sensors or propulsion systems. Each disappearing act behind the sun wasn't random, it was a window we couldn't see through. And yet, every calculation, every observation, every broadcast humanity had ever sent compounded the mystery. 3i Atlas wasn't just a scientific anomaly anymore, it was a reminder of how unprepared we might be for the cosmic neighborhood we had unwittingly made ourselves part of. Because these anomalies could hide intent, scientists began asking not just what is it, but what could it do? The deeper they dug, the more unsettling the possibilities became. History, after all, has a way of teaching harsh lessons. Think of the Trojan horse. 
a seemingly harmless gift hiding a lethal payload. One scientist reminded colleagues that first encounters with advanced civilizations should be approached with extreme caution. Assume hostility until proven otherwise. A probe could be more than an observer. It could deploy drones, test defenses, or even manipulate satellites in low Earth orbit thousands of kilometers above us. Preparation always beats blind optimism. Humanity had never faced anything like this before, and our safety could hinge on how carefully every movement and trajectory was assessed. But the other side of the coin was equally compelling. Could 3 IATLAS be a friendly visitor, an interstellar scout simply exploring? Comparisons to Voyager and Pioneer, which traveled at roughly 17 to 20 kilometers per second, came to mind. Machines sent decades ago to map, observe, and collect data without posing direct threats. If this were a robotic probe, its motives might be purely scientific, mapping the solar system, monitoring planetary activity, or cataloging life. Yet, friendly doesn't automatically mean safe. Even an exploratory mission could accidentally interfere with satellites, affect orbital debris, or create unforeseen hazards just by passing nearby. The line between curiosity and danger was thin, and every scenario required sober consideration. And then there was the ultimate nightmare. What if it actually struck Earth? The numbers were staggering. Even a 500-meter-wide object traveling at 87 kilometers per second would release kinetic energy exceeding 10,000 megatons of TNT, dwarfing humanity's largest nuclear detonations. Tsunamis could sweep across entire coastlines, firestorms could engulf regions hundreds of kilometers wide, and dust clouds could block sunlight for years. Global agriculture might collapse, ecosystems destabilize, and mass extinctions could follow. Even without any alien intent, the raw physics alone meant civilization-ending consequences were possible. Every simulation underscored a simple truth. This was not a situation humanity could afford to underestimate. Scientists found themselves caught between scenarios that ranged from hopeful to catastrophic. A hostile probe could exploit our own signals and weaknesses, observing our satellites or testing defenses. A friendly scout could inadvertently cause havoc simply by its proximity. And the collision scenario didn't require malice at all. Just a miscalculation of speed or trajectory and devastation would be instantaneous and global. The stakes were unprecedented. Every observation mattered. Every calculation of energy, trajectory and timing could inform preparation strategies. Scientists stressed that underestimating an unknown object could be catastrophic. Overestimating it might strain resources, but the risk-reward balance was clear. Vigilance was the only safe path. Even minor details became significant. Its alignment with planetary orbits, speed of 87 kilometers per second, and potential hidden maneuvers could indicate intent, or mere coincidence. Scientists ran models simulating impacts, tsunamis, firestorms, and long-term climate effects. Each scenario, whether hostile, friendly, or accidental, painted a chilling picture. Humanity had never faced an interstellar visitor with such real-world stakes. And yet, despite the potential for disaster, there was awe. Here was a visitor from another star system, moving faster than anything we had observed, threading precise paths past planets, carrying the possibility of intelligence. Its presence demanded respect and fear. Even if friendly, the physics of an impact or close encounter could be civilization ending. If hostile, even minor errors could trigger catastrophe. Humanity had been forced to confront its vulnerability in a way no textbook or simulation had ever prepared it for. This was no longer a distant curiosity. It was a scenario planning nightmare a lesson in cosmic humility, and a call to take every measurement, every calculation, every probability seriously. The object's velocity, trajectory, and hidden possibilities combined to form a puzzle that might decide the difference between survival and global catastrophe. Faced with such unprecedented risk, agencies scrambled to translate theory into action, designing plans that could actually intercept or counter the object before it reached Earth. As scientists scrambled to understand 3IATLAS, rumors began circulating about NASA's so-called Shield 3 project. 
a rapid response intercept program designed for scenarios just like this. The concept was bold. Intercept the object far from Earth, potentially with a nuclear payload. But even in theory, the challenges were staggering. Matching velocity with chemical rockets against an interstellar object moving at 87 kilometers per second seemed almost impossible. Calculations showed that an intercept beyond one astronomical unit would require delta V exceeding 50 kilometers per second, pushing propulsion to its absolute limits. And by the time trajectories were plotted, the intercept might already be too late. The universe wasn't waiting for bureaucracy or budgets. Meanwhile, the geopolitical layer added another level of complexity. The US, Russia and China all had stakes in potential responses. Militarizing space could become a temptation, but it carried immense risks. At the same time, leaders' new public panic had to be managed. Disinformation, careful messaging and strategic silence were tools in play. Competition often threatened cooperation and the world might never hear the full truth until it was too late to act. Every launch, every plan, every analysis now existed under the shadow of secrecy and politics, turning what should have been a global scientific effort into a delicate strategic game. Amid the tension, astronomers waited for signs at perihelion, roughly 0.25 astronomical units from the Sun. They called it the Comet Test. Does 3 IATLAS produce gas and dust as expected, or behave differently, hinting at artificial structures beneath its icy shell? Every observation could tip the balance between coincidence and intelligence. And if it reappeared off its predicted course, breaking models and expectations, the moment of truth would arrive. Humanity would have to decide, was this merely a remarkable natural object or something far more deliberate, perhaps even aware? The countdown to discovery became a race against physics, probability and time. Every velocity measurement, every trajectory calculation, every flash of gas or dust from the surface was scrutinized. Was it following the chaotic randomness of the cosmos or navigating with intent? Each simulation and prediction was a step toward the unknown, forcing humanity to confront assumptions about interstellar visitors. Behind the scenes, military and scientific organizations worked in parallel, balancing secrecy with urgency. SHIELD-3 calculations tried to account for speed, distance, and intercept timing. World leaders debated potential responses in secret. Meanwhile, the public remained largely unaware, trusting that whatever arrived from beyond the stars was either harmless or would be managed by those who knew better. The tension between transparency, survival, and the unknown created a scenario unlike anything humanity had rehearsed. Even minor deviations in three IATLAS's path could carry monumental consequences. A few meters off in trajectory, a tiny acceleration change of 0.1 meters per second squared and predictions could collapse. At perihelion, astronomers would look for subtle cues, signs of gas, dust or artificial propulsion. The timing, velocity and behavior all became critical clues in a cosmic puzzle where stakes weren't just scientific, they were existential. The closing suspense was undeniable. Humanity's test was just beginning. Each observation, each calculation, each silent second of monitoring would determine whether this encounter was coincidence, natural anomaly or deliberate intelligence. The object was no longer a distant mystery. It pressed against the limits of technology, politics and imagination. And in those final moments before perihelion, every mind looking up at the sky felt the same chilling uncertainty. We were about to find out if the universe had merely visited or if it had noticed us. No conclusion could be drawn yet, and perhaps there never would be one that satisfied everyone. The comet, or probe, remained a mirror, reflecting not just the unknown, but humanity's ambitions, fears and vulnerabilities. As telescopes tracked its path, satellites prepared for contingencies and global leaders whispered plans, one thing was clear. The moment of truth was not an end point, but a beginning. Humanity was on a cosmic stage, and whatever played out next could change the way we saw ourselves, our place in the universe, and the fragile reality of life on Earth.